Let's talk about the observer pattern. So the observer pattern is a behavioral design pattern where multiple objects can subscribe to another object and be notified whenever that object changes. So the key benefit to this pattern is that objects can react to changes on another object without the objects having to directly reference each other. So a good example of this in the .NET ecosystem is in WPF MVVM applications. So in MVVM applications, the view subscribes to the view model and whenever the view model changes, it notifies the view so that the UI can update. So on that note, in this demo, we're gonna implement the observer pattern by building an MVVM console application. So in this demo, the domain that we're dealing with is a cart. So we have an order item view model and an order item view. And rather than just walking through all these code files, let's just run the app and step through it. So starting off, we instantiate an order item view model and pass in the description of our item. So just choose, let's step over that. And then we instantiate an order item view and pass in our view model. So let's see what happens in there. We go ahead and print out our UI, which is just writing out to the console. So we write out our order item view model description and quantity, which is another property we have on our view model, which will come into play in a little bit. So let's step out of this. And then we set a view property on our view model. So kind of weird thing we have going on here. The view references the view model and then the view model references the view as well. And then on our view, we click the increase quantity button. Of course, there's not an actual button, just simulating that we're just in a console application right now. But let's step into this function. And what that does is executes an increase quantity command on our view model. And what that command does is it increases the quantity of our order item view model as expected. So let's step into that. So in this quantity setter on our view model, of course we set the quantity, but then we take that view. So we set the view previously and we call print on it. And that writes out our updated view model information via the print function on our order item view. So we executed that. We can actually see everything that's happened in our UI. I should have had that up. But basically we called print when we instantiated our view and then we call print again whenever the quantity change on our view model. So there we go, we call it print. So moving along, we also manually set the quantity so we don't call this function on our view and we just set the quantity to five, which works as expected. So we call view.print after setting the quantity and as we can see, we have our shoes with a quantity of five. So this is just poor separation of concerns because certainly the view model shouldn't be responsible for updating or reprinting the view whenever a property changes. Ideally, the view should just be responsible for updating itself whenever the view model changes. So based on our view, we really could do that. We could just call this print function again whenever we execute this increase quantity command. So. After we execute that command, we can just call print. And if we do that, then hey, maybe we don't have to call print manually from the view model. So we could remove that and then remove this view property. So now we no longer have a reference to our view from the view model. And let's not even set that view property since it no longer exists. Is this gonna work? Let's try it out. Let's just continue all the way through. And no, it does not work because our view didn't know that we manually set the quantity on our view model to five from our program.cs. So the view didn't know that it needed to print again. So overall, our application is extremely brittle because we're trying to manually call this print function whenever we change the quantity on our view model. So all of the components of our application are trying to get a reference to our view and manually call print. When in reality, what are we trying to do? We're trying to update our UI, or in other words, call print, whenever a property changes on our view model. So we need some kind of reactive structure so that we can subscribe to changes on this view model and be notified of those changes in our view so that we can call print again. And the way to accomplish this, of course, is with the observer pattern. So with the observer pattern, our view is going to observe on our view model, be notified of property changes on that view model, and of course, update our UI by calling print. So the way to implement the observer pattern in a .NET application is via 
an event. So let's implement an event on our view model that our view can subscribe to whenever properties change. So we could just create and define our own event for property changes, but there's actually a built-in interface in .NET, and this is what WPF MVVM applications use to notify views about property changes. That's called I notify property changed. So let's import that and implement it. And all we get on this interface is this property changed event that we can raise whenever a property changes. So the only property that can change on our view model is this quantity property. So in the setter, we're gonna take our property changed event and if it has subscribers, so if it doesn't, and we try to raise this event, then it'll throw null. So we need the optional chain here and then call invoke. So we're raising the event with this as the sender and let's pass in our event args, property changed event args, and we pass in the name of our property. So the name of our quantity property. So by raising this event, anything that's subscribed to this property changed event is going to be notified. So in this case, we would like our view to be notified. So we need to subscribe to that property changed event on our view model. So in our constructor, let's take our view model and subscribe to property changed. Let's create a handler for that. Let's just import these parameter types. There we go. And whenever our property changes on our view model, we simply want to print out our updated UI. So let's call it print in the property changed handler. And now this function call after we execute our command doesn't need to manually call print. So anytime a property changes on our view model, we're automatically going to reprint the UI. So we don't need to manually do this all throughout our application now. We're highly reactive and we know to print whenever something changes. So with that, that should be everything that we need in order for our application to be reactive and update whenever our view model changes. And the big key here is that our view model is of course no longer referencing our view. We don't have that circular dependency anymore. And now our view model knows nothing about our view and our dependencies flow in one way. So our view references our view model. And that's fine in this case. In a WPF MVVM application, we wouldn't even have this direct reference between the view towards the view model because we'd be using bindings, but we're not gonna get into that here and implement console MVVM bindings. Anyways, let's run this. Let's make sure we got some breakpoints. So we're gonna click the increase quantity button on our view. Let's step into that. That executes our command, which increases the quantity on our view model. And in the setter on the quantity, we raise property changed and our view is subscribed to this event. So we handle it in our view and update the UI with our new view model quantity and other details. So let's continue here. And here we're going to manually set the quantity to five on our view model. So let's step into that again, going to raise property changed. So, Hey, our view model changed. And as a result, we call print on our view again and update the UI. So our application is highly reactive and changes or updates the UI whenever anything causes our view model to change. So much more robust, we don't have to pass around our view throughout the application and manually update it in order to get our UI to print again. Instead, we're leveraging the observer pattern and observing on property changes on our view model. And whenever a property changes, we're notified and we reprint the UI. One last thing I wanna mention related to the observer pattern is since we're subscribing our view to the property changed event on our view model, that causes our view model to have a reference to our view. And since our view model has a reference to our view, that means the garbage collector would never be able to clean up our view if it ever went out of scope and we wanted it to be cleaned up. So that being said, we want to unsubscribe our view from the property changed event so that the garbage collector can clean it up and we don't end up with memory leaks. So a good way to unsubscribe from events is via I disposable. So on our view, we can implement I disposable. So let's implement that interface and let's move this function closer to our subscription. And all we're going to do in this dispose method is unsubscribe our handler from the property changed event. So now this event will no longer have a reference to this method on our view and it'll allow the garbage collector to clean up our view. But of course we're going to have to call dispose. So we can just do that in our program.cs. We can take our view and call dispose. And let's just run this application should work as expected. So this time we dispose our view 
and remove the event subscription. So we weren't really at risk of memory leaks anyways because our application is just a simple script that runs once. But in a larger application, there could be memory leaks if perhaps this view model lived for a very long time, perhaps the entire lifetime of the application. And then our view subscribed to that property changed event on the view model. And then maybe we created and deleted like thousands of views throughout our application. If we never cleaned up the event subscription, then those thousand views that we instantiated would never get cleaned up by the garbage collector because the event on our view model would still have a reference to the view. But if we dispose of the event subscription and clean it up, then the views would get cleaned up by garbage collection and we wouldn't have a memory leak, which will be great because memory leaks are not fun to track down. So make sure you remember to unsubscribe when necessary. But overall, hopefully you can apply the observer pattern to your own application to build reactive applications that won't scale like a big ball of spaghetti. Aside from that, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave those below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.